got a tour scheduled for uh, uh, for the end of October. So save right. up your pennies, Calvin, and come with me. You know, uh, I know. I just, just was putting on the website uh, today some some I haven't done this too much, but you know, kind of hype marketing. I, I I focus on research, and that's really where I am. But I did put uh, various comments that tourists with me have made, and so you know, pe people are. Uh, yeah, because the magic is Egypt. I mean, I, I like to believe that I'm value added too. that with my knowledge and contacts and things that I can really add to the experience. But Egypt itself, you know, provides uh, provides the magic. So, so, yeah. uh, you know, there's there's a lot of, you know, a lot of positive comments from people because, you know, it's it's just uh, there's nothing else like it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a beautiful place. And I mean, the, pe the people who aren't just baffled by the pyramids it's like how are you not you know it's it's just a gorgeous site and i mean there's so much mystery surrounding it i mean i could i could talk about egypt for hours you know and that's why i need i need to get you on here because because you're you're the guy to talk to i think but um so i've kind of been looking at some of like your youtube videos um and a little bit about your on your, like on your instagram page yeah. so what kind of like new research like have you found anything recently that um is new to you that's really compelling and that's really isn't accepted by modern academia well um you know anything i do is not going to be accepted by modern academia because uh, i'm i'm an independent uh research institute now i i have made presentations unlike almost every other independent researcher uh, I've made uh, two presentations at large e Egyptological conferences, and that's because uh, my submission was uh, uh, blind reviewed. And so they don't know whether they're reviewing something from a high school kid or a professor at Harvard. Uh, fair, they fair. they accepted on the merits. So I was accepted on the merits. So in that sense, you know, I have rubbed shoulders with uh, those big guys. But, you you, you know, the, the, uh, the, that class of people is, uh, you know, they're, they're trained PhDs and it takes a lot of money and time. Yeah. to get a PhD and you have to uh, accept, uh, you know, a certain, a certain amount of parameters that, that I don't want to, you know, hold myself to. I do have three advanced degrees. I've got one in political science, uh, education and theology, but uh, I, you know, the, especially for archeology span and Egyptology, I don't want to put the, the burdens on myself that they have to work under. Partly the, you know, the way they do uh, excavation, it's so, uh, you know, uh, tiring in the sense so exhaustive you know they'd sift through every layer of sand and you know identify these little objects and i, I respect that as a conservative of science you know that Absolutely. that's that's one way to to gather truth but you know i use uh, theological i use esoteric i use i'm mate don't even necessarily <clears throat> subject myself to the uh uh the the, the world of uh, strict forensics you know i go on intuition hunch the guidance of the alpha and omega and those are things that an Egyptologist could never do. But although I have argued, uh, you know, I've got a, a YouTube video about there about uh, that I made in Egypt about uh, independent researchers and Egyptologists working together, sort of like the marketplace. Take the marketplace. I was from Chicago. You know, the Chicago Board of Trade is one of the largest markets in the world. You know, futures contracts are traded there. Uh, every commodity is traded there. And what is necessary for the market to go is you have to head have uh, uh, speculators, and then uh, those that are, uh, you know, running conservative businesses. You're, you're Nabisco. You want to keep the price of cornflakes the same. You want to keep the price of sugar the same. Right, right. You don't want your price at the store to be fluctuating. So you need the speculators, the people that buy and sell to make money. That they're not out to, you know, make their product be a stable product they're out to make money the speculators create the market then that allows you to buy a futures contract where you can lock in a price so those two players are necessary in the financial market to make it go well in the in the market we're talking about now uh you know research of, of ancient ancient mysteries mm -hmm. uh you've got the conservative science of egyptology and archaeology but then you've got the independent thinkers like me where we bring in the big ideas and so i think that that you know so we can do something that they can't do. You know, these big ideas, that's not part of the forensics of, you know, the, the conservative type research that they do, but it can, it, those things being out there can be accessed by them and help direct, you know, research and stuff. So, and, and obviously for uh, independent researchers who tend to be, a, you know, maverick freelance bunch, yeah. it's good to be, it's good to be grounded in what they have discovered, what forensic science has come up with. 
So I do think that there could be a, a better working relationship between the two, but most independent researchers tend to take the attitude, you know, the Egyptian authorities are hiding things. You know, they, they, they know stuff that right. they're not, you know, and I, I just don't buy that. You know, I, I know Dr. Mark Lehner, probably the most famous scientist at Giza. He's an honest man. He's doing real research. So, you know, you got to find a different game than slamming the Egyptologist. Okay. Present what truth you have, but you don't need to slam them right. to make your truth. I agree. Because I've, heard, I've got, I've heard a lot of hate around people like, like Dr. Zahi Hawass and stuff like that, of like, um, you know, him rumored to be hiding things of like the stinks and the pyramid. So do you think that, um, I guess they're being truthful and that they really are releasing all the information or do you think that they're holding anything back at all? Um, well, you asked me two, you do, you do ask me two different questions. Right. First of all, are they truthful? I, I, at, the, at the level at which they work, they're truthful. There is truth, you know, but uh, are they holding something back? They might be, you know, just like I've, I've got three or four research projects going right now that, that I haven't said a word about because, you know, I want to, I, I want to, you know, test myself. I want to, I yeah. want to go before I, I say, here's the discovery. And I think Egyptologists do it all the time. Like for instance, Hawass didn't release any footage from, you know, the, what the Jedi robots did, you know, in, in the air shafts, right. well, he doesn't want everybody to tell immediately anything he's learned. Any, anybody wants to yeah. sit, but, it, but, but usually what's meant is this, that, you know, they don't, they don't put it in a positive spin like that. Well, of course he's going over data. He doesn't want to just put something out there until he knows right. it. They're sort of saying, oh, he really found the secret mummies and he's not telling us. He really found the hall of records that Edgar Casey talked about. Yeah, but yeah. He doesn't us. I think, are you deluded? Do you really think that Mark Lehner and Zahi Was found the hall of records, but they said, Shh, let's keep it quiet. So all those guys don't say, we told you so. Fair enough. I mean, I just, I don't believe that for a moment. You know, they, they like to get famous for finding things. If they found the hall of records, they could, they could get their name even higher Mark I, Lehner I, finds I Hall records underneath the paws of Sphinx. So the idea that they're hiding something that way, no. And, and as far as hiding evidence, you know, like that, I've heard uh, Dr. Lehner say it. Uh, he was back in his hometown in Minot, uh, North Dakota on a little TV show. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he was asked about Graham Hancock and John Anthony West and these guys. He said, look, you know, the, uh, I, I hear their claims. They say that there's an ancient you know, lost high-tech civilization. He says, well, there is, it's the one I'm finding. You know, he has dug in Giza for 40 years. Right. And he hasn't found any spaceships there, you know, and, and, and really there's, there's not evidence of a former Atlantis unless you use the kind of evidence that, oh, look at these drill holes, look at this curved granite. But what people don't realize, look at the YouTube channel, Sacred Geometry Decoded. Yep. Yeah, Egyptians could do those things. That's not evident to show a drill hole, to show curved granite, to show highly polished and straightened sides does not is not evidence of Atlantis. It's evidence of the great craftsmanship that Egyptians were capable of. And I'm sorry, you know, you're just holding on to the party line and you haven't looked at what a granite worker skilled can do today mm -hmm. without high tech tools. OK. Just, just go to a master craftsman. I used to work with a stonemason trained in England, uh, uh, Henry Fowler. Mm -hmm. he, what, what a stonemason can do that's trained. And think yeah. about in Egypt. It's amazing. There were no, there were no universities in Egypt. There was no yep. uh, formal university. There was no schools of engineering. Well, how did you learn? Just think of what you could learn, though, if your father and your grandfather and your great grandfather were all stonemasons and they taught you yeah. every day and you learned. That's much greater than going to a college for four years. So you go to a school of engineering for three or four years, learning from father to son. To, so, so that's the way they learned and they, get, they gained a tremendous reservoir of capabilities to, to, to do remarkable things with stone. So if you're gonna convince me that there's an ancient high-tech civilization that's missing other than the Egyptian one, show me where the shopping centers are. Where, where are where's the nuclear reactor? Where's the steel factory? Where's the uh, where's the uh, the phone banks? In other words, if they had a high tech civilization, those are evidences of high tech civilizations. Right. Just, just tell me a drill right. hole and in curved granite is evidence of ancient high technology. Sorry, you're gonna have to do better than that. Okay. So so you don't necessarily um, 
you don't necessarily believe that uh, Graham Hancock or like uh, Randall Carlson or, you know, Robert Duvall, anything of that nature. Do you think that um, they're kind of passing around the wrong message, more of a pseudoscientific well, message? Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I absolutely believe that Atlant an Atlantis-like civilization existed. I'm not denying anything that they're saying. Right. I'm just saying they didn't. There's no evidence that Giza was built by it. Gotcha. Okay. I, I believe Atlantis existed and it fell. That doesn't mean it built okay. everything in the world. Right. Atlantis right. Did, but it, did, but it didn't build Giza. I mean, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I do think that there were things going on in Giza before the pyramids were built. It was it's oh, been yeah. a holy place. Definitely. Definitely. The ancient legend says that Enoch, the prophet Enoch was translated to heaven there because if you believe the bible the bible says he didn't die he was translated to heaven mm -hmm. and you know the the uh, oral tradition says it was from giza so giza you know is an ancient it's got an ancient history for being a holy site that doesn't mean that the pyramids were built uh you know anciently i mean like before the flood or you know right, ten thousand right. years ago it just means they were built in a place that had a very holy history